Hello and welcome. Uh, today I wanted to go through the patch 2.3a notes that came out yesterday. I gave myself a day to just really see what's happened in this patch and give my full opinion on it. And um, as well, I also started a new job, which is why I have less time to make these videos. But I will definitely keep making them, so don't worry about that. So anyway, let's uh, start with this. So, patch 2.38. So, it was released, as I said, yesterday on the 16th of September 2014. So it says, from the implementation of individual estates and land, along with added residential districts to the continuation of the Zodiac weapon quest chain, an item level boost for extreme Ramu rewards and much more, patch 2.38 is sure to offer something for all adventurers. A host of user interface refinements also promise to make exploring Eorza more intuitive than ever. Okay, so we have here the next part of the relic quest, so I don't need to go through this because my previous episode already explains how to start this so then okay we have some new quests for the moogle delivery moogle quests and i have already done everything before this so hopefully this weekend me and honey jade will record these four new quests to get to carrier level nine and let's see fates so it says players now have a chance to obtain alexandrite by completing fates while equipped with a relic weapon novus or relic weapon nexus so that is a change more towards supporting you getting another novus so rather than having to farm endless maps or endless mythology or whatever it will just be a way of just keep to keep gathering them as you go along and then who knows by the time you get to your your second animus done or if you have already or maybe a third whatever then you can get the novus done very quickly assuming you can get the right material for it so okay grand of free companies so the authority level for newly created free company hierarchy ranks will now default to member rank member refers to the rank of the same name that appears in the hierarchy options for newly formed free companies okay in the event that the deletion of characters results in a free company losing all of its members, that company will now automatic be automatically disbanded and its estate deeds rendered void. In the event that the deletion of characters results in a link shell losing all of its members, that link shell will automatically be deleted and its name uh, once more made available for newly created link shells. Okay. So, yep, so that sounds good. So it's just a way of basically saying that if people delete their characters, quit the game, whatever, that Link Shells will just um, be recycled. They will not just stay there forever. Okay, housing. So it says the 7th and 8th ward will be added to each of the adventure residential districts. A large amount of additional land is also scheduled for implementation in patch 2.4. This is a very important point because on Sargatanis, all of the small houses and all the free wards in all of the new wards, like all of the free areas, all of them have already sold out. And they sold out within two or three hours of uh, patch 2.38 going live, which was um, sad for me because I was intending to buy a small house and I wasn't able to because I was at work. So that's why adding a large amount of additional land is important. So it says the pricing for plots will vary depending on world population and economy. Prices also are affected by location. There may be differences between plots of the same size. The following is a list of starting prices for each world. The plot prices will devaluate once every six hours, Earth time, with original price falling to half after a period of 30 days. So uh, basically, this is the same as when the free company housing came out. And one thing they have said is that individual player housing is the same as FC housing, as simple as that. So it's either a case of you buy it yourself or you buy it with your free company. It's just the same thing. Um, for me, personally, I thought this was kind of a lazy solution to individual player housing. It's like all they did effectively was update the placards to allow individuals to buy and not just um, FCs, which in programming terms probably took them an hour. So it just seems like they really rushed it to get at least something into patch 2.38 and then they were really put in the extra work in patch 2.4. But I was extremely disappointed with this. This is you know, I love everything about this game, but I do not appreciate ever, you know, rush jobs or 
things which are just so oh, whatever let's just do this and hope they like it you know really really no because for the longest time they were talking about um you know oh small houses will cost 800k and you know we'll see if there'll be different wards or whatever you know it's like i was hoping for something more than just let's just add an option for people to buy fc houses for this you know individually so i really you know i'm going to give this my lowest rating ever for a realm reborn i'm going to give this four stars out of five <laughs> anyway moving on so um and basically yeah the, the it's the same as before so the high population servers like masamune sagatan it's all this list have the highest prices the lowest population like these ones the newer servers they have lower prices simple because their eco economies are not as vibrant as the bigger servers and um here you go it says here plots will sell for the same price for both free company and individual buyers pricing for high populated worlds has been set higher due to greater amounts of gill in circulation which is very very true because i am making more than 200,000 gill for field crafty materia freezing sargatanis which i imagine is not true on all servers and it says the grouping listed above is subject to change based on variance of population and economy okay so they're saying that servers might jump from list to list and different pricing ranges so it says pricing for new plots in the first through six wars will match the prices set in patch 2.38 and will gradually fall based on the devaluation process outlined above okay so it says each residential district is divided into a number of identical wards even if the plot of land you deserve has already been purchased in a certain ward it may still be available in another okay that seems fair enough so it says, plots of residential districts will now be available for virtual individual buyers. Leaders and members of free companies that already own estates can also choose to purchase plots as individuals. Well, that's good. So it said, in order to purchase land, a character must first attain, have attained level 50 and at least one class, and also have earned the rank of second lieutenant in one of the grand companies. This extra thing of earn second lieutenant in one of the grand companies is another way of saying... You're not going to be able to buy a house if you just leveled your Fisher to 50. Um, each character meeting these requirements can purchase a single unowned plot via the placards found within the residential districts. Plots of any size and within any ward may be purchased. Interacting with a placard and selecting purchased LAN will bring up an option to buy the plot as either an individual or free company purchase. Okay, that seems simple enough. So that's all it is you go up to a placard you go up to the plot you are interested in you click on the placard if it's available click purchase buy it if you have the gill go ahead and but like i said on mass on oh, sorry on saga Tarnis, all of the small houses and every single ward of every single area sold out like already so it says once a plot of land has been purchased the owner will gain access to the housing features in the same manner as a free company estate more details and features can be found in the housing section of patch 2.1 okay makes sense so i'm happy at least that i've got my uh, private chambers so that will do for now until i guess until batch 2.4 and it'll give me more chance to save up guild towards getting i guess a medium house rather than a small one and let's see private chambers cannot be added to individually purchased housing okay so that is just a feature for free companies rather than for individual houses and it says, purchasing land or housing using gill obtained through RMT, real money trading, or illicit means is strictly prohibited. Any land or estate hold deemed to have been purchased through such means is subject to seizure. Which is another way of saying that if you bought gill to buy your house, then it will just be deleted. You know, and you'll lose your gill and you'll probably get banned as well. So don't bother. Don't waste your money. Don't do it. It's just, it ruins. There's no point playing a game if you buy yourself to victory that's like what's the point you might as well just not play and save yourself all the money uh, anyway so it says icons for individually purchased housing will appear on residential district maps okay so it says when entering a residential district from an open world area uh, or when interacting with a storm private Ser serpent private flame private or ferry skipper npcs owner names in the destination options will now be displayed as abbreviated company name for free company housing and character name for individual owned housing so what they're basically saying is is that when you select the list because i've already seen it already you see the fc tag if you bought it as an fc if not you see the player name um, in case 
In the case where both a free company estate and a company member's personal estate feature a miniature A for right, the teleport destination list will label the selections as either free company or individual housing. Players can now ride mounts within the residential districts. Hallelujah. Uh, personal chocobo menu access from the chocobo stables has undergone some changes. The fated to wonder challenge and the challenge org will now count fates in which you earned a gold evaluation, regardless of whether or not the fate was completed successfully. Okay, because you can't get gold when you fail. That's the thing. If you've if you've done enough to get a goal, but the fate itself overall has failed, they're saying that you will still get credit towards the challenge log, which is good. So it says, in order to accommodate features scheduled for implementation in patch 2.4, uh, the following locations have received graphical adjustments. So it's worth going to check those out. My feeling is is that the area in, in Limsa Liminsa Lower Decks, which is right next to the Fisherman's Guild, if you go take a look, is going to be where the Rogue Guild is. And the area that they changed in Issa Lenosia is, is probably where you're going to be going to unlock Ninja. So it says, new structures will be added to Revenant's Toll in Mordona. Okay. So you can go check that out if they've building up Revenant's told more towards its city-like state. So, battle system. It is now possible to register for the Strike and Tree Extreme via the Duty Finder without a pre-formed party. Because before you had to go in as an eight-man group. So I know that registering this duty as a party re requires a composition of two tanks, two healers, and four DPS. So it means you can't use the Duty Finder to do any weird and wonderful setups. You have to... Uh, you're forced to do it this way. So it says the item level of the following rewards obtainable from the striking tree extreme, as in Ramu extreme, has been increased from 100 to 110, so all the rings. So furthermore, any of the above items already in the player's possession will automatically be raised to item level 110, which I can confirm because I already had the judgment ring of fending and the judgment ring of aiming, and both of them now are 110, which is great. And PvP actions will, will be equipped automatically when changing your class or job. With this change, the Grand Company selection button and the checkbox for equipping actions has been removed from the PvP tab of the Action and Trace interface. AP for PvP Action and Trace must still be redistributed to the job or class with which you wish to use them. Okay, so it says to prove it. PvP game balance. The ability Cleric Stance will no longer be usable in PvP areas and for me that's a really good change because when I was doing a couple of front lines you know I am obviously it's item level capped to 80 but obviously as a max out bard uh, doing one on one with a scholar I couldn't even touch the scholar and he out DPS me because of his Cleric Stance and you know it's just it seemed absolutely ridiculous so that I think that is to combat that is that healers should not be out dpsing um you know pure dps classes it just doesn't make any sense so it says ad additional balance adjustments uh, are planned for pvp after observing the impact of the rogue and ninja additions in patch 2.4 cool makes sense so it says the following graphical adjustments have been made to the frontline campaign carton of flats borderland ruins a segment of the wall jutting out of the Serpent Landing into the battlefield has been flattened. Certain obstacles between Serpent Landing and Allegan Manors have been removed. Cool. So I'm guessing... I did feel like that, that always um, some people would be able to get to these places really a lot easier. The other teams will always get there quicker than the Serpents. So adjustments have been made to the following items obtainable from the Treasure Coffers in the Second Coil of Bahamut and Psychus Tower. So unidentified Alan and Tutsan all of time, the treasure coffers that appear upon completing turn 1 of the second call of Bahamut, aka turn 6, and defeating Amon and Zand in Psyker's Tower will now always yield the above items. So you will always get the the unidentified Alan and Tutsan all of time from turn 6 and the last two bosses of Psyker's Tower, which means that you will get two of them within a full Psyker's Tower run each. And Sands of Time, the treasure coffers will, will that appear upon completing turn 2 of the second call of Bahamut, aka turn 7, will now always yield one pinch of Sands of Time, rather than it being luck based, it's guaranteed. And the coffers that appear after defeating the last boss, or Zand in Psychus Tower, will now always yield two pinches. So what that means is, is that from the last boss of Psychus Tower, you have a chance of getting, obviously, an armor piece, an unidentified Alagon Tombstone, an Oil of Time, 
to Sands of Time, and also you have the chance of getting the Wind Up Onion Knight pet. So up to six items will drop, a minimum of five, which is good because it means that raids full of people will gear up a lot quicker than before. Because I did Psyker's Tower many, many weeks, and I think I only ever won like two items from all of those weeks because of how difficult the competition was. So this will go a long way to helping sort that out. Um, new items have been added, so all of the Nexus weapons. Okay, and these are four new random, sorry, three new random glasses that can be crafted and uh, just for the sake of glamour really and the zodiac glass which is used in the nexus quest chain and new recipes have been added so you can see these are the recipes for crafting the new glasses the following items are no longer considered unique allowing players to carry more than one of them artisan spectacles forager's hat that's great because really a lot of people only buy artisan spectacles for desymphing so this is a, a good thing, being able to actually buy loads of them to desymph rather than just one at a time. So it so says the following items may now be stored in your armoire. So these are a bunch of seasonal items that were restricted, were not allowed into your armoire, now they are. So if you want to free up some bag space from your retainer or wherever your bags will have stored these, then just feel free to throw them in your armoire. The class restrictions have been adjusted for the following items. So the Eka uh, wrist gloves are basically they've been they're making them available for all classes only for the sake of glamour, so that you can glamour it onto any class. That is the purpose of that change. So it says the crafting log have been adjusted as follows. So to account for the influx of new recipes, a page switching feature has been added to these to those categories that contain over a hundred recipes. As a pack two for free eight, this only will affect the housing item category for carpenters okay but it's basically to say that rather than having to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll you will be there will be a hundred per page which will, should make things easier it says a recipe shortcut feature has been added to the crafting log players may now add recipes to the hot bar and directly open the respective page of the crafting log so that's great because sometimes you're trying to find some item in all of these different pages and it can take you a long time and if there's random regular items you craft all the time you can basically just drag and drop them onto your hotbar now so you can open them straight away and the good thing as well is that every single craft has got its own set of hotbars so that you can add all of the relevant ones for that craft without having to worry about it taking up too many slots so let's see um they said in the gamepad controller mode a sub command to register the cross hot bar has been added. Okay, that's for just controller based PlayStation or PC controller mode only. So new achievements have been added, inspire the Nexus for obtaining your Nexus weapon. NPCs who have gained have, who sorry who have gained new functionality as of this update will be indicated with an overhead icon. After being successfully matched for a duty, a unique system sound will be played to draw the player's attention to the confirmation screen. Okay. So it says this sound may be toggled on and off by using the play system sounds while waiting for duty finder checkbox in the system configuration sound settings. When opening your armory chest or inventory to equip your retainer with gear, the confirm button on a gamepad or controller will now also change equipment. Okay. So the recommendations feature has been adjusted as follows. Face with a recommended level lower than your current level will now be displayed in the recommendations list. It is now possible to filter duties by category. For certain duties, recommendations based on your equipment's average item level will be listed with highest priority. Certain hairstyles previously only accessible via the aesthetician are now available when creating new characters and retainers. These hairstyles will also be accessible when using Fantasia to change your character's appearance. Certain hairstyles or face paints connected to individual quests will remain exclusive. Sorry. Yep, so the, the certain hairstyles they're talking about are things like the lightning haircut, which you could only have got from the lightning, lightning event. Um, the ability to save a character's appearance is now available as a subcommand from a character selection screen. So this is in case you didn't save it when you first created the character. You can now just go back and save it whenever you like just by right clicking. Make sure you don't press delete. Um, the following window interfaces have been changed to reflect adjustments to PvP actions. So it says the grand company listing on the PvP actions has been removed. Okay, because I did feel it kind of pointless anyway. Um, because they're all the same. Um, the action and traits, the Grand Company tab displayed has been removed, the frame for selecting actions has been removed. Um, teleport interface has now 
has received the following adjustments. Players will now be able to filter by categories, including specific areas and favor destinations. So you can see here, these are all the buttons that you can do if you want to limit your teleport list in any way. The open map subcommand has been added, allowing players to display a map of the area surrounding the selected aphorite. Okay. When using the return from the main menu or the cross hotbar, recast time will now be displayed. When using return from the main menu or crossbar, recast time will now be displayed. The weather forecast interface has been redesigned and players may now filter the display by area. Awesome. So that's pretty cool actually. So that's like, uh, it just to make it, rather than it just saying words like it did before, is to give it a more visual effect. So on maps and mini-maps, character icons will now be displayed with priority over icon types. The icons of four Grand Company outposts in Carton of Flat Borderlands areas have been redesigned for better uh, visibility, as you can see. They're clearly, clearly marked which Grand Company each one belongs to. I mean, people already knew, but it's just to make it even more obvious. For currently occupied outposts, a circle representing the color of the occupying Grand Company will now be displayed around the outpost icon. Awesome. So it says to prevent accidentally triggering the controls for the map link feature in gamepad controller mode have been has been changed. Um, before you would set a map link by pressing RBR1. Now to set a map link you have to press LB plus RB L1 plus R1. Players will now have the option to display the name and size of fish caught by other players in the vicinity in their log men window. To display these messages, enable other phishing messages under character configuration, log window settings, general log filter settings. A new message has been added to alert the player to new messages received for currently unselected chat channels. In the log window, a special symbol will now appear at the beginning of lines in which an item or place name has been linked. Okay, so that little icon there is to show that this is a link to something that you can click on. So the positioning of certain on-screen messages has been adjusted. A feature has been added for disabling the display of battle-related error messages that appear at the top of the screen. And this is great for me as a bard because a lot of my abilities use macros which have got a lot of abilities in the same macro. So what that means is that whenever I press them, it will do the random ability that was available, but then it will constantly spam on my screen not ready yet not ready yet not, you know basically it will spam those messages on my screen so now they've added in the option to hide it so it doesn't happen anymore which will make it more macro friendly so it says mess messages affected by the, the display recast timer error uh, messages setting are also affected by this new setting the complete list of messages affected by the setting are as follows not ready yet target is not in rage cannot use yet cannot use while casting not enough HP, not enough MP, not enough TP. Certain error messages for detrimental status effects have been adjusted. In anticipation of new features planned in patch 2.4, an extra slot has been added to the soul crystal section of the armory chest. And obviously that's to allow for the ninja soul gem. So it says asking prices will now be displayed and retain a list of items up for sale. The compare prices button in the upper right of the market window has been easier to distinguish which is good. I mean, I did make a guide months and months and months ago explaining how to access it, but now it literally does say in there, like, compare prices. You know, it's, like, really obvious. So, um, in anticipation of future updates, a new die category has been added to the dying interface. Shop windows involving exchange of specific items now display the quantity of NQ and HQ items currently in your possession. So you can see here, it needs 60 umbral rocks, and it says what you have. In this case, zero, 00, but it would display if you have any. Okay, so it says away from keyboard status will no longer be automatically disabled upon moving the mouse cursor. Uh, you probably have to move your actual character, not just your mouse. Two new UI scaling increments, 90%, 110% have been added. To complete The complete list of UI scaling increments is as follows. 60, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 140%. These new increments are also accessible via the UI scale text command. The remove all subcommand has been added to the additional actions in the action and traits interface. Okay, that's awesome. 
So that's just to remove everything at once without having to individually disable them through multiple tabs of other jobs. Uh, the following actions and adjustments have been made to the Moogle Delivery Service interface. A new button for retrieving reward items including bonus items and veteran rewards has been added. Reward items will automatically be retrieved upon login. A warning message will now be displayed when your letterbox is at full capacity to warn you that you will be unable to receive new letters. Hovering the mouse cursor over the counter icons for GM letters, reward item letters and standard letters with attachments will now display the maximum number of letters that can be saved. The aforementioned counter icons will now display in red when a particular category has reached maximum capacity. You will be unable to receive any new deliveries for any categories already at maximum capacity. It is recommended that you discard any unneeded letters. Okay. So it says subcommands for certain items have been rearranged for more consistent ordering. Um, item subcommand item comparison has been added. This subcommand will compare the parameters of the item selected with your current equipped gear. When the selected item is a ring, comparisons to the left and right ring may be toggled. Okay, so the item sub command try on has been added in the following places company chess items equipped by examined players, the glamour interface, infantry windows, the armory chest, and the armor. This is basically like if you examine a, a, another character and you see he has some really interesting gear, you can then use the try on feature to see how it looks on your character. Okay, so it says the search for item subcommand has received the following adjustments. This sub subcommand may now be used for crystals and shards. This subcommand may now be used for in the following places. Inventory window, the armory chest, the gathering log, retainer inventories, the character window. Okay, so it says the link subcommand has been added in the following places. The gathering log and the armoire. Let's see, HUD parameter bars will now display current weapon status, thief, unseaf, as well as the current targeting mode. So you can see here, this is it just shows you if your weapon is um, out or not. And uh, so targeting mode will now be reflected upon uh, enabling filter customization of the character configuration control settings. Okay. So new emotes. They've added the hug. Um, and the thing is though, you don't like grab the other player, you just put your arms in this motion so you have to be standing fairly close to the player. What's cool about this one as well, that if you're a tall character like an Elizan or Mikote and you're hugging a Lullafell, then you will actually kneel down in order to do it as well. It does recognize your target. And slap, so you can slap other players if you wish. The change pose emote has been adjusted as follows. One additional unseafed weapon idle pose has been added, and this is different from class to class. So for example, a warrior holding a two-handed axe will hold it over his shoulder, whereas a caster holding a staff will kind of hold it in front of them, like horizontally almost. Uh, but obviously that depends on the race and the gender and whatever. But for female Makoti, that's how they do it. It says, use a change pose emote with your weapon drawn and your character will assume a new pose while holding his or her weapon. There are separate male and female poses for each class. Poses will not change for 5 seconds after executing auto attacks or actions such as weapon skills. Okay, so it says to enjoy these idle poses, auto seafing of weapons must be disabled under character configuration control settings character you'll now be able to move freely with no monetary sorry momentary freeze after dismounting which is good because what used to happen before is that when you dismount you would sort of be locked in position while you're jumping off your mount and then you'll be able to move so that's not going to happen anymore so it says when using the text commands hot bar copy and cross hot bar uh, chop bar or xhb copy the argument current may now be used to specify your ca character's current class or job. For example, hotbar copy current one gladiator one copies the contents of slot one of your current hotbar to slot one of your gladiator's hotbar. 
So it says new accessibility settings have been added to the system configuration for Windows version only. The Final Fantasy XIV teams tries to provide an enjoyable, accessible gaming experience for all of our players. As part of this continuing endeavor, we will we have implemented an experimental new visual alert feature. Due to system limitations, this feature will only be available on the Windows version of the game. About visual alerts, the option to enable a representation of sound waves has been implemented for the benefit of hard of hearing players. With this feature enabled, players will see a visual representation of various sounds emitted within the game. We hope that this will prove useful as well as convey the sense that the world of Eorzea is alive with sound. That's awesome. So details, sounds of visualized as waveforms from three categories of sound, see below, each represented by a different color. These visualizations are connected to the game's volume settings, so the size and visualization may be adjusted by adjusting your volume settings. So blue for background music, okay, red for system alerts, green f uh, sound effects, ambient sounds, voices. Please note that this feature does not yet support movie sequences such as the game's opening. We apologize for the inconvenience, but it's something they're working on at least. So it's just, if you're deaf, it, this is just to visually give you information about it, but obviously I haven't um, accommodated for the deaf viewers, so I apologize for that. Um, but you know, if you know someone who's deaf who happens to play this game, then just tell them, let them know that this is a new feature that's been added in. Okay, and there are the settings as well. So it says the following options have been added to the system conf character for configuration. Uh, general cutscene sk uh, cut skipping. So it says skip playback of character housing cutscenes. As a patch 2.38, this option only affects the chocobo raising cutscenes. And this is probably going to be more to do with in the future with like airship building, whatever. We just have to wait and see. That says log window settings general log window settings display error messages when actions fail log filters announcements other phishing messages so this is what we spoke about before and then the following settings under system character configurations has been removed so general help compare items this setting has been rendered unnecessary due to changes in the functionality of item comparison so default settings for the following options under system character configurations have been changed uh, let's see, so existing settings will not be changed. The new default settings will take effect should you choose to restore your settings to the default. So own display name settings default always, uh, log window settings, general log filters, announcements, gathering messages change to own gathering messages. Cool. So it says new settings options have been added to the system configuration menu. Sound settings, play system sounds while waiting for duty finder. Uh, control settings, PlayStation 4 version only, remote play settings, enable rear touchpad default on. This setting allows you to disable the rear touchpad controls on your PlayStation Vita when playing remotely. Note that this will render the L2, L3, R2 and R3 unusable, so consider your intended control scheme carefully before disabling. Accessibility settings visual alerts enable visual alerts size transparency the following settings on the system menu system configuration have been adjusted display settings default ui size default size 90 percent 100 okay so it's yet again just talking about what they spoke about above so it says the following adjustments have been made to the main menu on the system menu key binds the following commands under the chat tab can now be bound without using the control alt or shift keys Okay, it's just a random list. So it says new entries have been added to the auto translation dictionary. Cool. So the aforementioned text commands and mounts have been added to the text command and mount categories. The background music for Pharaoh Sirius has been adjusted. That's interesting, I might have to look at that someday. So resolved issues. The following issues have been addressed. So it says an issue wherein the aggro range of certain monsters was er erroneously low. With this fix, monsters, particularly those found in instant dungeons, trials, and raids, will have a greater aggro range than players have been accustomed to until now. Um, an issue wherein the initial cursor position of the glamour interface while in gamepad mode was incorrect. 
an issue wherein players were able to select unrelated items for delivery in certain quests an issue wherein the cross hotbar commands would spill over the edge of the screen on lower resolution settings okay playstation 3 plays in four versions only an issue wherein messages from blacklisted players would be displayed in the log window while in certain dungeons an issue where the running speeds of mounts were not consistent with this fix all mounts will now run at the same speed walking speed however will still differ by mount only the gobu mount was affected by this issue i had a feeling that the gobu mount was a bit slower but okay they fixed that now so it says an issue wherein certain pieces of equipment displayed incorrectly when using the city mode while fishing okay so it says to resolve this issue the seating fishing pose for lalafell females has been altered an issue with the exali beast drive quest wherein the icon for the status uh, facility access production 2 was incorrect an issue wherein the items obtained from desynthesizing a pair of boar skin duck bells was incorrect an issue wherein potential target highlights would display even when disabled an issue with residential areas within the error message displayed when unable to execute the move to front gate command did not display properly an issue wherein emote adjustment did not function as intended an issue in frontline wherein pvp profile standings would not calculate properly for players who were offline at the time of the where the, the time sorry were offline at the time the campaign ended then re-logged in while results were being displayed an issue in frontline wherein the slaying of a pet would erroneously count as a kill and give five tactical rating points and obviously when they say pets they're talking about like the scholar pets for example or summoner ones um an issue where with housing within logging in certain conditions would result in the loss of the player's personal chambers wow now that is worrying so or well, whatever they fixed it so it says an issue with the exile daily quest labored and lodging wherein the key item large granite rock could not be mined rendering it impossible to progress further an issue with the exile daily quest getting into gear wherein it was impossible to progress further under certain conditions an issue wherein it was possible to stray off the edge of certain maps making it impossible to progress further an issue with the main scenario quest unsolved mystery wherein the quest was impossible to complete under certain conditions an issue wherein the opening the company profile window under certain conditions will make it impossible to progress further an issue where attempting to sell items from the inventory window under certain conditions would make it impossible to progress further so these are a lot of like you know like get to a certain point and then not go any further bugs but so i guess it's good that they fix them all does so it an issue in the front line wherein players attempting to enter a campaign already in progress will not properly uh, sorry will not be properly assigned to a party so that might explain the long queues who knows an issue wherein opening a sphere scroll under certain conditions will make it impossible to progress further. An issue wherein performing repairs under certain conditions will make it impossible to progress further. An issue wherein attempting to desynthesize an item under certain conditions will make it impossible to progress further. An issue wherein switching tabs and character window will make it possible to progress further. So you're getting the gist of this, right? So there's an issue with, wherein the animation for the item Realm Reborn Red did not display properly. An issue in Form Much Hard, wherein it's impossible to progress further under certain conditions. An issue with the Praetorium, wherein area-based damage dealing sources would be carried over into the Asion battle phase. I haven't done Praetorium in a while, so I didn't know that. So an issue with front lines, wherein players were occasionally unable to ride uh, Pillion on the Draught Chocobo when in battle. An issue wherein it was impossible to infuse a relic weapon with material under certain conditions. An issue with Holebreaker Rao wherein the detrimental status uh, dropsy would not wear off under certain condition. Um, an issue wherein messages from blacklisted players would occasionally be displayed in an instance dungeon. Cool. So last but not least we're talking known issues. So issues that they know are still active as of patch 2.38. So it says, an issue with Cardinal Flats where in progress it becomes impossible under certain circumstances. An issue where in executing the MLCOK text command will make progress impossible under certain conditions. Regarding the above, restarting the client will correct the issue. 
um, an issue with the system config uh, movie cutscene dialogue language setting wherein the setting for Japanese is displayed in Japanese. An issue wherein the animation for the start of the limit break sky shard is incorrect. An issue in the log may not display properly when using Master Goldsmith D Materia. Okay. And obviously, I guess that's the recipe book. So it says an issue occurring after zoning to the residential dictionary wherein a minion may not be displayed correctly. An issue in the second coil of Bahamut Savage Turn 4 wherein the Dalamud spawn may behave incorrectly. So I wonder if anyone's actually tried that or got that far. An issue in the in Cutter's Cry wherein certain graphical sorry, certain graphics are displayed incorrectly. So that's it. That's patch 2.38. And I just wanted to give my, you know, opinions on it and of how it's how it was for me. It's a nice patch, why not? Well, but more to come in patch 2.38. But yeah, so anyway, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching, and as always, goodbye from me and goodbye from Mifri.